and thank you for joining today's webinar, Modern Field Service Case Study, Top Congrove Service Revenue by 10% while Improving Productivity by 30%. I'm Naomi Alston, part of the Field Service Event Series team, and I'd like to take a moment to introduce you to our speakers today. Joining us, we have Melissa Morgan, uh, Director of Product Marketing at ServiceMax. Melissa has over a decade of marketing experience. Uh, prior to ServiceMax, she worked with customer experience programs and technologies at market research and survey software companies. Uh, so welcome, Melissa. Also joining us, we have Gary Jansos, IT Director at Topcom. Gary joined Topcom in 2012 as Director of IT and oversees the medical division as well as other Topcom business units. He's always been a tech geek, audiophile, and Salesforce enthusiast from Fortune 500 organizations like Viacom and BMG Entertainment to a recent stint at a creative startup where he served as the chief architect. He specializes in developing innovative approaches for delivering technology and altering business process in order to realize top line revenue. So big welcome to both of you. We're looking forward to hearing from you. Before I pass you over, I just wanted to let you know that we will be doing a live Q&A. So please feel free to submit your questions throughout the webinar and you can submit questions using the control uh, panel. There's a questions tab there. And lastly, we will be sending you the final recorded webinar and slide deck within 24 to 48 hours. So with that, I'd like to pass you over to Melissa. Thank you so much. And good morning or good afternoon to everyone, depending on where you are. I want to just first walk through our agenda for today's webinar. We're going to start off with talking a little bit about some key considerations for modern field service and what the thought process behind that might look like. And then I'm going to hand the discussion over to Gary to talk a little bit about Topcon's transformation story and how they went from more manual processes to modernizing their service operations. Then we'll end up with a very brief overview of ServiceMax and talk a little bit about some benchmarks that you might find helpful for evaluating your own service organization. And as mentioned, we will also have plenty of time at the end for any questions. So let's go ahead and get started. I want to start today's discussion by thinking a little bit about what modern field service means. So I think a good way to do that is to look at the service delivery process of yesterday, so to speak. Basically, a customer would call in with an issue um, for an installed product, for example, and you would dispatch somebody to go out, a technician, to go out and repair that issue. And it's a pretty kind of narrow and simple way to think about it, but it's a way that I think a lot of people still today undergo this process, and a lot of vendors and field service also think about it. And so when we talk about modern field service as a concept, you know, we have to think about being current and the idea of mobility and how when you look at your service delivery process, it has to be much broader than this, right? It really has to start from the point of of acquisition of that product by the customer. So as soon as they're acquiring that product, that service process really must begin. And so in order to really deliver a modern and flawless field service process, by taking a deeper view, you're looking at things like getting customers on contracts and maintenance agreements, learning the issue sometimes even before it happens, things like thinking about getting the right tech there at the right time with the right parts, and also collaboration, how you can tap the expertise of your organization, and so just thinking about the entire service process in a more holistic way. Ultimately, when we are look at, looking at modernizing our service organization, we have to have our ultimate objectives in mind, right? So industry experts have done a lot of research to uncover what the top objectives are of service leaders, and it pretty much comes down to three things. This is a survey from 2014, early 2014, that was done by Aberdeen. And ultimately, it comes down to driving service revenues, improving customer loyalty and satisfaction, and improving operational effectiveness and productivity. And so when you start to think about your journey towards modern field service, a good way to think about it is what are the business drivers that are most important to me and how do I want my approach to modern field service to really impact either the bottom line or productivity, whatever it is that's an issue within your organization. And I think Gary is going to touch a little bit about this and how that worked at TopCon as well. The other thing is when you think about measures like customer satisfaction and loyalty, we also have to take into consideration that we're in the so-called age of the customer. 
And according to Forrester CEO George Colony, the age of the customer is a 20-year business cycle in which the most successful companies will reinvent themselves to systematically understand and serve increasingly powerful customers. That's a quote directly from Mr. Colony. And so I think when we talk about the power of the customer, they have the opportunity to purchase whatever products and services serve them, but not only that, social media and just the flow of information today makes all of their customer experiences that much more powerful because they're going out and they're sharing their experiences through reviews. Other customers are then reading that information to determine where they're going to acquire products and services. And so their expectations are much higher. And in order to really serve the customer and create promoters and high customer satisfaction within our customer bases, we need to take into consideration how we can adjust our business processes to best serve our customers. And that leads a little bit into how we look at modernizing field service. And so here are some things to consider when looking at what modernizing field service might look like. The first thing is we talk about being cloud-based. Software as a service or in the cloud basically makes your systems more flexible, up-to-date, reduces capital expenditures, allows your employees to work from anywhere, and really extends nicely into mobile. So at ServiceMax, we talk at something about something called field-ready mobile, and that's essentially mobile applications that are designed for your technicians or field service engineers that are out there on job sites during the day. They are configurable to your business processes, really accessible and easy to use no matter whether you're offline or online. And so thinking about how having cloud-based technology that extends into mobile can really change your business operations is something that Gary's going to touch on more. But ultimately, that's a really big part of modernizing field service is using that technology. The other thing, it really ties back to thinking about that service delivery process of yesterday versus today, which is that end-to-end -end view of field service, right? So you're having access into things like parts, um, all of the installed products, where they are, and how that impacts service delivery, um, collaboration with other um, experts at your company or other technicians in order to fix things first at the right time. And then from service and leaders and business manager perspective, having, having visibility into real-time information so that you then have the agility to make business decisions faster and kind of adjust your delivery process to the, the speed of business, so to speak, and have your technology adapt with you to that. The other key or best practice to think about when talking about modern field service is accessibility. And so making sure that your technology is accessible no matter where you are or who you are, whether you're a partner, employee, um, or, and so on. And then also the simplicity. And I think simplicity is really important when thinking about technology adoption, right? So you, you're going to make the investment in a field service solution. Now you have to make sure that your employees are really going to use it and it's going to work the way you anticipated. And so the simpler and more straightforward that process is, the more likely adoption will be. And so if you can follow some of these best practices as you start to think about modern field service, we've found in the past that these are some of the keys to success. And so with that introduction to kind of the thought process behind modern field service, it is my pleasure to introduce Gary Yantos um, and pass it over to him to tell you a little bit more about TopCon's story and how they've made this transformation. Thank you. And thanks to everyone that joined the webinar today. Uh, my name is Gary Yansos. I'm the director of IT for TopCon America Corporation, uh, currently overseeing technical operations and strategy for TopCon Medical Systems, which is based in Oakland, New Jersey. We engineer, manufacture, distribute, and support uh, diagnostic equipment for the ophthalmic or eye care industry. And this is equipment that helps to diagnose disease of the eye. We're about $80 million in revenue right now and growing. Um, our customers are predominantly private doctors, uh, clinics and hospitals in North and South America. And if there's ever a problem or a question regarding an instrument out in the field, an initial call comes into our help desk 
staffed by about 30 engineers. And um, hopefully we can resolve that call on first contact. But if we don't, what we will do is dispatch one of five field engineers out to that location. Now, some of those repairs can be done on site. Uh, but in some instances, if parts are required, that instrument may have to be uh, shipped back to us for depot repair in Oakland. From there, we'll check entitlement, service contract status. We may provide a loaner instrument uh, if, you know, if they're entitled to that. We might generate an estimate for the repair if uh, the work is billable. So just to give you an idea uh, in terms of the scope of what we support, we currently provide service for roughly 8,000 unique locations. And our product master contains just over 200,000 serialized items. And I'm tracking about 380,000 product warranties. And we receive about 10,000 calls into our help desk on an annual basis. I'm pretty sure you're here on this call today uh, because your company provides service in one way, shape, or form. Doesn't matter which vertical you're in, what you manufacture, you provide some level of service to your customers. And let's face it, your service organization is the face of your business. Your customers are more savvy, more connected than ever before. They want they expect great service because service is the big differentiator. We knew that our service organization had the potential to, to gain top line revenue. But how do you elevate the level of support that you provide to your customers? Really anticipate their needs and change from a reactive mode to one of a more proactive nature. What we needed was innovation and scalability. And we knew that moving our service operations into the cloud was a large part of the answer. This probably looks familiar to some of you. Uh, we were essentially in the same position. Uh, a lot of paperwork a bunch of manual processes. In fact, there were parts of our service process that were actually paper-based. We were pretty much stuck with a legacy client-server app. Um, don't get me wrong. I mean, it served us pretty well for a number of years, but it was rigid. And it prevented us from scaling the way that we really needed to. To me, it was just another non-integrated silo of information provided us with limited visibility on parts and warranty costs. Uh, we may have even lost a few loaners. Um, and since we had a hard time determining service entitlements and contract status, in some cases, we were giving away free service. What we were looking to do is lower administrative costs and drive big efficiency gains and potentially increase service revenues and SLAs. We knew that we had to make radical changes in the way that we service our customers. We needed to get in front of these problems and become a world-class service provider. And many of the processes that were in place were done that way for so long employees just accepted them. So as uncomfortable as it was for some to change, it was really time for us to consider a fundamental shift in the way that we provide service. So I just wanted to take you through a bit of a history lesson to demonstrate the way that we used to do things. Uh, there was a paper form. Help desk used to fill it out and then pass it on to someone who would actually reach out to the field service person and hand them the information. Um, the field service person would uh, have to use a Windows-based application, as I mentioned before. Uh, requires a, a laptop, which is, you know, as you can imagine, sometimes bulky. Uh, they have to boot up the laptop. 
connect to Wi-Fi if they could, connect to the VPN, log into VPN, connect to the application, and then finally download their work for the day. But what if something changes during the workday? Um, they'd have to redo that process all over again several times per day. And as you can imagine, it slowed down our techs quite a bit. We, lo we lost the visibility in terms of real-time information. We had very little indication, if any, in terms of our location or the status of a call. And subsequently, it slowed our response time down to new calls that were in the queue. The result, a lot of unhappy customers, uh, disengaged workers, lost revenue potential, and you know this is the kind of process that clearly doesn't convey that we are a technology-rich company. What we wanted to do is get rid of it all. Uh, we wanted to introduce a powerful mobile device into our field service operations. We wanted the full functionality of a service platform without it really feeling like it's an afterthought. Um, we like this idea of being always on, always connected, um, you know, not, not having to boot up a laptop all the time. Uh, in many cases, we're in hospitals and areas where there is either limited or no Wi-Fi. So having the ability to uh, you know, synchronize in online or offline mode, that was very important to us. We wanted to have uh, this notion of uh, immediate data capture, real-time reporting. Essentially, we wanted to lower the form factor of the technology into a powerful mobile device. Uh, you know, for us, we're carrying parts, we're carrying toolkits, we're carrying documentation. We're basically maxed out. So consolidating all of that documentation and a large majority of the technology required to do their job was um, was absolutely important for us to do. ServiceMax was the clear winner for us because it's one of the very few products that represents a comprehensive service framework. And we had the ability to tune it to make it relevant to our business. Now, those of you who have uh, had some exposure to Salesforce will know that this is a platform that allows you to be very nimble and respond quickly to the changing needs of the business. And you can do it without a huge amount of unnecessary spend or having to uh, hire an army of consultants or IT staff. This is a product that has a powerful business process modeling tool built in. It's called the Service Flow Manager. And it allows you to make, to make the software match a desired business process. Instead of being stuck in the box like those legacy client server applications, this is a product that has an incredible field service dispatch console built right into it. There are tools built inside this product that allow you to do workforce optimization to put the right tech on the right job at the right time. It's really important. You have to respond quickly to changing business conditions. Some call it moving at the speed of business, but if you can't do it, you're going to get left behind. So. For us, it was about moving away from rigid systems that held our business hostage and towards a platform that could scale and change along with the changing needs of our business. I needed it to be easily integrated with other systems like our ERP and support our vision of the 360 degree view. Now, even though we make ophthalmic instruments, at the end of the day, we're a technology company. So for us, customer perception means a lot. Our field staff is pretty small. So if we put 
one of our techs on a plane for a service call, when they're at a customer location, they need to have all of the relevant information at their fingertips. With the ServiceMax iPad app, our techs are able to tap into resources that they were never able to before. Uh, case history, warranty information, parts lists. They're able to collaborate with engineers back at TopCon headquarters to help them fix the problem. They're able to generate an estimate right there on the iPad and have the customer sign it and send them a copy in real time. Having that ability speaks volumes about customer loyalty and satisfaction. Not to mention that we're back in headquarters and we know exactly what's going on and when it happened. We see the repair record, the estimate, electronic signature, everything synchronized back to the record and service max. But on a mobile platform, we feel that we can do a lot more. As I mentioned, our field service team is pretty small. So in some cases, we'll put them on a plane and fly them clear across the country to repair a product. We need to make the best use out of their time as we can. So now, we've given our team access to additional mobile tools coupled with ServiceMax so that when they're done with a the repair, they can look at a 20-mile radius around them and they could see that there's an account with a service contract that's going to expire this month and it's just five miles down the road. They could see that there's a high priority case open in the next town over. They could visit that customer that's called maybe three or four times this month for the same instrument. If we can also shoot a lead over to marketing for an aging piece of equipment or an observation that there's a competitor device at that location. And all of this is available by using ServiceMax and leveraging a completely mobile platform. And our techs have adapted very well. They're telling us that they rarely power on their laptop anymore. They love the fact that they have a completely converged device for email, calendaring, scheduling, and the customers are really impressed. And so we feel that the lines between personal and professional are blurring a little bit. So we let them use the device for personal as well as work-related. Uh, so there's a pride of ownership. And they treat it like it's their own. And we feel that there's also this pride of service because the customers are very impressed. And the perception uh, from a customer is huge, as I mentioned before. So now I have more engaged workers, and I'm giving them tools that help them bring continuity back into the rest of the business. And this was the beginning of the transformation for us. And I'm happy to say that we've been leveraging ServiceMax for over three years to run our entire service organization. We've developed those integrations with our ERP, and we've optimized it to ensure that all of our products and parts are tracked. And we've seen significant productivity gains. I don't have to get administrative staff to piece together different bits of information from different systems in order to see what I need to see. Now I have complete transparency into this part of my business. We're getting in front of issues before they occur. We're able to get in front of warranty expirations and service contracts. And we're able to determine how profitable they are. We could track cases from the call center through depot repair and out to the customer site uh, in a single unified system. And so subsequently, our cycle times have decreased. We're getting the right technician to a customer site with the right parts, no more paper-based systems. And the iPad technology allows us to consolidate the manuals and schematics and all of the information that's required to perform their jobs. And it means that our customers are up and running quicker than they were prior to ServiceMax. And I think another byproduct of this is that our first-time fix rates by the help desk have increased as well. They're not 
putting information into multiple systems and trying to find information in various different locations. We clearly understand what components are at a customer site, what their case history is, certain characteristics of that location, and just a wealth of information right there at our fingertips. And uh, you know, the result is that we're giving our customers the best service experience possible. We're able to identify trends quicker and pass that information on to engineering in order to produce uh, a stronger product. And some other interesting transformational things have happened. Um, this holistic adoption started to occur. Service started to share information with engineering and sales. Marketing began to leverage the system to gain insights on potential leads. Uh, service is actually passing lead information directly onto marketing now. And this is a system that's been in place for a while. So these walls are starting to come down and real collaboration is starting to take place. And innovation is starting. Our employees are actually seeing that there are better ways to do things. And with a product like this, we're able to mold the system to match our desired business process instead of being stuck in the box. And so we've accumulated a gold mine of information. We actually have meaningful information at our fingertips. And we can now make critical business decisions. And I'll, I'll just give you an example. I mentioned the warranties earlier. I've got over 380,000 product warranties. I think it's closer to 400,000 now that I'm keeping track of in ServiceMax today. In fact, I could tell you that right now I have 1,300 warranties that are going to expire this month. I've never had that level of visibility before. And now I can actually do something about it. So we're recognizing more opportunities for upsell and cross-sell. We're no longer losing parts and writing off dollars that we should be billing our customers for. We're a unified team. We're actually sharing data. And we've turned service into a revenue generator, by increasing service revenues by 10%. But, but most importantly, our customers are getting better service than they ever have before. And in its, it's really been an enlightening journey for us. I'm not a Merck or a Pfizer. ServiceMax has really leveled the playing field for me. I have all the same functionality, full suite of products, and complete visibility as any of those big players in the space. And I did it amazingly fast. And I didn't have to break the bank doing it. So my advice to you, if you're considering an investment in field service technology, is don't recreate the wheel. Take advantage of apps that meet your requirements, enable you to easily install and roll into production quickly. Don't fall victim to those high ROI, rigid solutions that will hold your business hostage and result in a huge amount of unnecessary spend. And also, really take some time to think about what transformation means to you. For us, it really it just meant a cultural shift at an organizational level. It was about driving innovation and always questioning why things are done the way they are. Based on our success with ServiceMax, other parts of the business are now asking us to implement the same product. So now I'm expanding into new geo markets and introducing this technology to help other parts of our business gain the same level of insights. So these are the questions I'm asking myself now. Can I leverage Salesforce and ServiceMax to get to market faster? 
by using this data as a marketing tool to potentially beat out the competition? Can I potentially increase revenues by identifying issues more quickly and producing a stronger product? Now, I'm thinking that the answers to all of these questions are absolutely yes. And I'm just the IT guy. So take a very close look at Force.com and ServiceMax. I was able to configure an agile, seamless solution that fit into my environment amazingly well. And you can do the same. And with that, uh, I'm going to pass it back for some final thoughts. Thanks so much, Gary. So just to wrap up our discussion here today, here is a quick look at the breadth of the ServiceMax solution that Gary was just talking about. You can see it spans the entire service life cycle from things like contracts and scheduling all the way to social engagement within your employee base, communities for your partners and your employees, and so on. And when talking about mobility, Gary showed the iPad. As mentioned earlier, Field Ready Mobile is really a major focus of what ServiceMax is working on right now. And a big portion of that is building applications that are device appropriate so that complement each other. So for instance, one application that really works well for the iPhone or Android smartphone devices, and another that works well on iPad and has kind of a broader range of functionality. Also taking advantage of the native features of those devices. We are also really focused on supporting the disconnected day so that whether or not you have internet access, your technicians are going to be able to get access to the tools that they need to do their jobs and also get access to the information that they need no matter whether they're away from the home office um, or somewhere out you know, where they don't have internet access, like a hospital. And our applications are also designed for field service in mind, and so things like larger touch zones um, for folks who are wearing gloves. And as Gary mentioned numerous times, consistent business processes that are configurable, and so extending those business processes not just from the web platform, but also into your mobile solutions. And we'll just sum up our discussion here today with some results that ServiceMax customers have seen. These are average results from our customer survey that occurred earlier this year. And the reason I show this is obviously to show the success that our customers have had, but even more importantly, it's something that you can use as a benchmark for yourself as you start on this modern field service journey or if you're already embarked upon it. You can look at some metrics, things like productivity and service revenue, and use these numbers as a way to measure your own success and see kind of how you fall against other service organizations out there that are doing modern field service. And so with that, I want to say thank you so much for your time and attention during today's presentation and open it up for any questions. Thanks, Melissa. Um, we've got a lot of questions coming in, and I just want to mention, just uh, if, if please continue to submit your questions, and we'll try and get through as many as possible. Um, so I'm going to start with the, the first one we've got. is for Gary, and uh, that is, what were the critical factors that contributed to TopCon selecting ServiceMax as a provider? So uh, we talk about um, clicks, not code, right? You know, we're, we're not... We're a small company, very sophisticated in terms of service. So our ability to uh, configure a product without, you know, a lot of IT resources was was really important to us. We're not talking about a development here. We're talking about point and click functionality to give you very very robust results. There are, you know, I, I say very few products on the market today. I don't think you, you'd you be hard-pressed to find any product uh, on the market, even within AppExchange today, that will give you that business process modeling tool, what they call Service Flow Manager, the dispatch console, which tells you where your technicians are, where the next call is, 
where the next closest technician is. All of these things uh, were, you know, were just head and shoulders above the rest in terms of functionality. And we didn't have to worry about any development resources at all. We, in fact, we don't have any development resources. Um, you know, it's, it's just it's configuration, not code. It's all visual uh, declarative uh, programming, basically. It's all visual. Thanks, Gary. Um, OK, next question we have is uh, for Melissa. Uh, Melissa, does Service Max work on other tablets besides the iPad? Yeah, so um, that's a great question. Currently, Service Max, um, it's our mobile solutions are available for iPhone, iPad. We have Android Preview on the Google Play Store right now for smartphones, and our Android um, full-featured app is coming out with our winter release um, towards the very end of this year. Um, so look for that for Google Play. And that, that release is going to be smartphone specific. And then we will be releasing Android for tablets um, in our spring release, um, so early next year. Um, and then in terms of making Service Max work on other mobile devices, it's in, we're, we build on HTML5. So through browsers, you can always make Service Max mobile work for you no matter what devices you're using. Great. Thanks, Melissa. Mm -hmm. And uh, another question uh, for you, Gary, is um, how did you tune Service Max? What service process required Service Max to be tuned? Uh, well, every part. <laughs> it, it's hard to say. That's a great question. Um, you know, the way I'm hearing the question is what service process needed to be tuned? Yes, that's it. How, how, how did it need to be tuned? I think the end-to-end -end service process needed to be tuned. Um, you know, we had separate databases of information, different systems everywhere. You know, having this ability to run your end-to-end -end service organization from within a unified platform, you know, that's that's huge. You know, so you know the manual processes, paper processes. All of all of this contributed to you know a dramatic decrease in our first time fix rates. So from the initial call into the help desk, dispatching field service, depot repair, managing the loaner process so that we don't have to write off loaners all the time. Um, I, I think the biggest thing for me is, uh, and probably the most complicated is the depot repair process. And for those of you that don't understand, this is when you know, if you dispatch a field service technician out to that location and it requires you to, you know, ship the device back to headquarters to fix it or to put parts in it, that's a pretty complicated process. And in a lot of situations, there's a lot of touch points associated with that. So automating that particular process was probably the focal point for us. Um, but equally as important was, you know, just the end-to-end. -end. We didn't have a dispatch console. It was all done through emails and paper, basically. So, but I would say the depot repair process was probably the focal point for us. Okay, thanks, Gary. And a, another question that's just come in for you is, um, how long was the implementation process to be able to start using the software? Um, well, Service Max did. The, you know, there's a lot of scoping that takes place, right? So you, you want to maybe consider that also. Um, you know, Service Max might even come on site to understand your business process. Depending on how complex that is, that could take some time. For us, they actually rode along with our service technicians in the van to understand where those pain points are. The total implementation time for us, I think, was about four months from start to finish. Okay, thank you. And another question is, um, Sorry, is this process integrated with uh, your company's mobility tool, or is this strictly Service Max's tool? Uh, so I'm I'm not sure if maybe they could rephrase the question, unless you can get a, a clarification on that. Yeah, let me jump to another one. How was Topcon introduced to Service Max? Uh, I came into the company after a uh, an attempt to implement Salesforce without any IT involvement. The service operations was actually looking at the product prior to my arrival, um, 
and they had evaluated a number of products. Uh, I don't recall the names off the top of my head, but I sort of stepped in and, and sped up that process a little bit and started to talk to them. Um, you know, we were Salesforce customers, and we thought that, you know, at, at, at the time and still to this day, the only full service, uh, uh, you know, platform on the App Exchange that represents a full uh, framework for field for field not just field service but the entire service lifecycle. Um, it, it's they're far and above, you know probably the most comprehensive and um, you know, in ter terms of who introduced me or how I got introduced I, I don't I don't remember exactly but they stood out and uh, started to have discussions with them very early on okay thanks Gary we're getting we're getting a lot of questions here um, so next one is um, Gary can you talk a bit about ease of integration to their ERP system for inventory and billing so ease of integration um, you know, we're using Jitterbit um, for to integrate our ERP system to Salesforce. And depending on what you know, what system you're using to integrate, you know, to Salesforce, um, you know, the, it, it's hard to answer that. Cause it's a good question. Um, ours was a SQL backend. Um, but assembling the data and making sure that uh, the the order that you have things being integrated, customers have to be you know uh, come before products, before serial numbers, before warranties. That process took the entire length, and you have to get that right. Um, the integration itself, that's that's the easy part. It's deciding which data goes together with which pieces that's that's the part that you have to give a lot of thought and time and effort into um, depending on how complex your system is um, jitterbit is a fantastic tool there are other really good ones out there uh, that are you know specifically integrating data right into salesforce without having to really think about it that much no programming required drag and drop interface uh, very easy to move data from one system to another. The time-consuming part is deciding which data and what it looks like. Okay, thank you. Um, Gary, the next question coming in is, um, is a license for Salesforce required for a ServiceMax license? Um, I am going to defer to the ServiceMax people to maybe answer that question. <laughs> Good call. Um, so the answer is no. You do not uh, need to purchase a Salesforce license in order to purchase ServiceMax. Okay. Um, okay. Um, next question we have is: um, Are there any limitations when creating the initial tickets, i.e., attachments, files, images, etc.? No, no limitations per se. Uh, the you know Salesforce. I, I want to say that maybe someone can uh, can uh, quantify this but I think the sales there's a Salesforce limitation of five megabytes per attachment but other than that there are really no limitations um, we're we are using some some other tools to make it a little bit easier uh, because right now what you have to do is click on upload an attachment or a photo or whatever and you have to do them sort of one by one and unless there's, uh, you know, inherent functionality in ServiceMax, I'm not aware of it, but we installed a free product off of AppExchange that allows you to drag and drop multiple files into the attachments area, and uh, and it just automatically processes them. You could do 10, 20, 30 at a time; really doesn't matter. Uh, but I think the limitation is a Salesforce limitation of five meg per attachment. Okay, thanks, Gary. And uh, with that, I think we've um, come to the end um, with a lot of great questions coming in. And I want to have uh, give you a big thanks to uh, Gary and Melissa um, for a fantastic insight and great presentation. Um, and also, final reminder um, to the attendees to, uh, that we will be sending out the recorded webinar and slide deck. So you can expect to receive that via email within the next 24 to 40 hours. And thanks again to everyone who joined us. And thanks again, Gary and Melissa.
Thank you. Thank you. Bye.